That would be great. Well, then, pulling in millions, uh, yeah, that would be, you know, definitely be a good thing for you. Yeah. Maybe one of these days, you know, just keep reaching for it. Well, I'm you sure you've had some lots of success. You know, we don't have to go with the dollar amounts, but I'm sure you you are definitely uh, a pinnacle of success, more or less. <laughs> well, I I put all my effort into it and give everything that I've got and try to stay positive with it. And you know, I think that uh, I I really believe in you know the positive. Uh, you know the power of positive thinking, and and that it's uh, it definitely helps a lot. It's very difficult sometimes because it's a you know it's not easy these days. The uh, the world that we live in, and the economy and stuff like that. So it's uh, uh-huh. it's, it's difficult at sometimes, but you know you just keep pushing forward. You know. Yeah, try to do the best you can, and and uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're we're uh, chatting with uh, Michael Strider, rock and roll photographer Michael Strider. We didn't really go into an intro; I just hit the record button, but I uh, figured I might as well. I gotta introduce you at least, you know. <laughs> That's a proper okay. thing to do, you know. <laughs> uh, we're talking to rock and roll photographer Michael Strider. Uh, I chatted with him a long time ago, back in 2006, when I used to do radio and everything, and he was one of the original people that got me started in doing interviews in the first place, and uh, it's been so many years since then, it's been over six and a half years at least since the last time we spoke, because I think it was like summertime when we spoke in 2006, and uh, how the heck have you been? <laughs> I've been great, I've just been uh, busy going back and forth from you know the east coast to west coast, back and forth, uh, L.A. to uh, right now I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina, and uh, so you know times are times are great. Having a lot of fun and getting ready to go back to L.A. in a couple of weeks. Um, I was living out there for a while, uh-huh. and right now I'm back here temporarily anyway, and uh, you know who knows I may be back out there <laughs> permanently sometime soon, but right now I'm in uh, North Carolina. Oh, it, it said on your uh, Facebook thing that you're currently, are you working for uh, Getty Images? Is that your employer? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, it's I'm a freelancer, so basically I shoot for uh, whoever hires me, whether it's a venue or an individual or a band or with these guys. I don't know how much you know about Getty Images, but they are basically the largest photo agency in the world, and they'll send me on assignment if they need something shot. Uh-huh. And um, so I've been working with them, and I still do my thing with, you know, with uh, with concerts and and stuff like that. I shot uh, recently. I shot the Who, and uh, New Year's Eve I actually shot the Avett Brothers. Okay, I don't think I've ever heard of that so, before. <laughs> Avett Brothers. Yeah. So <laughs> it's uh, you know a lot of fun stuff. Oh, that's cool. Even some some different stuff like corporate, you know, oh, yeah. corporate gigs, or whatever. <laughs> so a little mixture, anyway. Huh? Yeah, I try to mix it up and make it exciting. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean you gotta. And uh, no, I, I think it's kind of cool. I mean, if you if you guys have never heard of Michael Strider before, uh, you've probably been living under a rock because I, you know, this <laughs> this guy takes pretty good pictures. I mean, he's not just one of those guys that just uh, takes pictures of your school class or whatever, or your class pictures on class picture day. He's he's traveled all over and seen so many different things. And I think uh, one of the biggest accomplishments, I think anyway, is the fact that you got to work with uh, Kiss. Yes, um, I first got, uh, I think my first gig with those guys was probably 1996, they, uh, and I've been a fan since I was a kid, but oh, cool. they, yeah. yeah, they put their makeup back on in 96 and they did a, a press conference at the, on board the USS Intrepid Battleship in New York City, so I, I covered that, and from then on I shot them several times from, uh, 96 up until 2000 when they did their their first <laughs> farewell tour yep. and um, I shot for Peter Chris I was his personal photographer for the last for his last couple of shows with the band and it was actually turned out it was the last two shows of the original members so uh-huh. it was uh, a lot of fun a lot of excitement a lot of crazy rock and roll drama to say the least. Were, were you a big fan of that movie that came out in 1999 uh, Detroit Rock City I, I saw it I think I saw it once and it was a pretty cool movie um, I you know I only I think I saw it at a party or something and I just kind of saw it in between 
things that we were doing. But I mean, from what I saw, it was pretty cool. Were you a fan of it? Did oh yeah, it? yeah. I, I well, uh, the the funny thing about that is that uh, pretty soon here, I'm going to be having the chance to talk to the director or the filmmaker of that movie, Adam Rifkin. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and uh, well, we we haven't set a date yet, but uh, it's in it's in the works anyway. He did say he he would like to do it. He's just a really busy guy. And no, I I I actually own the the DVD of the Detroit Rock City, the special edition that came out uh, from New Lines Entertainment and uh, yeah, or New Line Cinema, and it's uh, it's a pretty good movie. Yeah, I think you know I haven't seen it in years. Maybe I'll go out and rent it again. Yeah, all but right. I have I've watched yeah. those guys, and I've. I guess I haven't seen them. It's been a few years since I've seen them. Oh. But they're great guys. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah, and uh, would you say they're like one of the favorite, most favorite bands you ever had to work with, or did you have a, another personal favorite? Um, man, Frankie, there's a ton of them, <laughs> I would say. Um, I know, probably a big library <laughs> full, I'm sure. Well, they, they were uh, my favorite as far as, I would say they, of all the rock bands I've shot, I've shot just about just about everybody. They they have the most power on stage, and they, you know, there are people who were born to be rock stars, and there are several rock stars that don't know how to be rock stars. They or there's some that just, like, oh, or there's some that don't know how to quit or whatever, and they like the Rolling right. Stones. Right? They, <laughs> yeah, they they don't know how to. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know how to act on stage, and there's nothing wrong with it. You know, whatever. That doesn't mean that they're bad musicians or bad singers or whatever. They just don't know how to to really, you know, sell it on stage. And those guys, you know, when I'm working with Gene and Paul and Peter and Ace or whoever they have in the band this week, uh-huh. um, they, you know, they know how every move that they make is picture perfect, and they know how to pose for the gay, you know for the camera uh-huh. every literally every move that they make it's it's really incredible and they always you know they're always right up in my face and stuff <laughs> like that so it's always it's always great I would say some of the other ones that I've really really loved um working with Gwen Stefani's great um Van Halen uh Springsteen is always uh-huh. really great uh-huh. yeah so I mean there's there's a huge, huge list, and you can see, you know, from uh, my website and from my Facebook page that, I mean, there's I've I've been very lucky to very fortunate to to work with a lot of just wonderful, great people. Yeah. And there have been a few dicks. Well, dick yeah, along yeah, you get a, you get a few, <laughs> you get a few of those, you know, a few assholes here. Hey, oh, it's, yeah, it's the yeah. internet; we can swear. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to deal with it. It's it's deal with it. It's just it's it's uh, it's all part of it. It's uh, you yeah. know it's, I'm a rock and roll photographer. I'm not an altar boy, so it's, it's yeah. I mean, you're it. you're you're definitely the real deal. I mean, you're. Uh, I think you're a very professional guy. I wish you I wish you were closer to my area or in northern Minnesota, or just came by for a visit to do some. F- just you know, to either shoot the shit or just to do some pictures or something, because you know, you know, I'm I'm kind of envious of, of of guys like you because, you know, you you set out, you have a passion for something and something that a lot of people have a passion for. It's a very similar passion with photography, but you're you're one of those guys that actually go out and actually go and actually see the world a little bit and go shoot shoot whatever you got to shoot, other than just stay, staying locally and just being, like I was saying earlier, just a class photographer type of guy or whatever that just sticks right. around a certain area. Well, I appreciate it, man. I'm, thanks for the compliments. I'm yeah. going to, you know, I, as a matter of fact, I almost made it out there last week because I was hired uh, a few weeks ago to be the road manager for the former, the original lead singer of Iron Maiden, Paul Diano. And we were coming through I think we were coming through your area, but we, you know, we had to postpone the tour till June. And plus, I think you guys have had like horrible weather. Yeah, for yeah. Like, a couple weeks. Yeah, because so. uh, cause I, I remember when you were talking about that. See, from uh, wherever uh, Savage, Minnesota is, or whatnot. Uh, right. I believe that's the area. I'm about six. Yes. Uh, I'm about right. six hours away from that because I went to MapQuest.com because I've never heard that town before, and uh, I went <laughs> to see how how far I was away from it. It's about six hours. I live more closer to uh, the Canadian border. 
Oh, okay. But, okay. Uh, but yeah. I'm still in Minnesota anyway. I mean, you may have had to go through like Grand Forks or Fargo or somewhere just to get right, through there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so you're closer to the Canadian border. Well, yeah, but I'm, I'm only two hours away okay. from Grand Forks. Two hours away from okay. Grand Forks and three hours away from Fargo. So if you ever do well, get up, if you ever do get up here and you do want to meet, you know, just let me know and I'll definitely make plans to come to Grand Forks to Fargo. And if you just be great, right, man. Yeah. We'll have, I think we're going to redo it in June, and uh, but I haven't got the dates yet. Uh-huh. So I think we're going to be up in that in your area, you know, around that time. Yeah, that'd be kind of fun. I w- you know, too bad you can't do any concerts like in Grand Forks or something like that because. I would go in a heartbeat just to just to go just to come see you. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool if you, you know, you just you know, touch base with me whenever you see the uh, the dates on my, uh, you know, on my page, and I'll put you on the guest list. You can come out and bring a friend with you and hang out and have fun. It'd be great, man. Yeah, yeah, oh, definitely be fun. definitely something to look forward to because I actually plan on hopefully moving to Grand Forks by that time when. Uh, or the time summertime comes around because that's a bigger city right. and it's a lot more to do and anyway. <laughs> so cool, so man. yeah, Very so cool. I mean, so so uh, for the people who are listening right now who don't know much about you, uh, how did the passion for uh, f- uh, photography start for you? I would say I was probably I was maybe five or six years old when my parents bought me a, and you're not going to remember what, you're not going to know what kind of camera this is, but it was called a 110 camera. It was very small, and it was like rectangular shaped. Okay. And, yeah, and uh, <laughs> as a matter of fact, when I used to, I first got my start with uh, rock and roll, I used to uh, sneak it into concerts. I would stick it down the front of my pants and and go into the concerts and you know a lot of times I would you know, photos from the balcony yep. which is if you knew it about that camera the, the negative is about a quarter of the size of a 35 millimeter negative which is already you know very restrictive in the first place so it was it was pretty crazy and sometimes I would sneak up to the stage um, I think the first rock concert that I shot was probably Rick Springfield. Oh, wow. And I think that was like 1985 or something like that. Jeez, and it wasn't that's a long time ago. Shoot. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't Almost, a professional shoot. That, yeah. was, uh, that was sneaking my camera in. Yeah, that's been what? 30, almost 30, 30 yeah, yeah, about. Almost 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I was only like two years old at that time, you know? <laughs> and there you go. I'm a little bit older than you, Frankie. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. I remember really kid, but, when I when I chat yeah. with you back in 2006, you were about ready. I think you were about ready to celebrate your 35th birthday or something, or 36 or something. So I'm sure yep. you're over 40 by now. <laughs> yep, I I'm, sure am. I'm yeah, still a kid though. Oh yeah, yeah. Because I'm 20. Yeah, hard anyway. Because I'm 29. When I t- chat with you before, I think I was like probably well, let's see, six years ago, probably about 22, 23 around that time, probably at least. Right, right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, <laughs> so it's I weird. Was, yeah, <laughs> I got my start basically. I got my start professionally by um, I used to work for Ted Nugent uh, several years ago, maybe around twenty years ago, and he gave a photo pass to a friend of mine for one of his concerts. And my buddy got sick, so I had to take his place, and then I just kind of fell into it. Yeah. So that's how I started doing. And here we are. Oh, so it's so, so it's just something that just kind of just uh, the luck of a of getting a camera when you were a kid and then just kind of dicking around with that and just thinking, boy, it'd be kind of fun to take pictures. Let's see if I can sneak something in and without getting caught and <laughs> and then here we are. Well, <laughs> or I don't know. I think you know, as the older that I get, I don't really believe in luck. I think everything happens for you know for a reason sure. and just it um. It's just something that I've always liked to do, and it's it's a lot of fun, a lot of excitement, a lot of, yeah, you know, but I, I say that, and there's also a, a side that, that people do not see. There's a, a really uh, difficult side, a very dangerous sometimes side, and, uh, you know, there's, 
a lot of stuff that you know that people don't that people don't see. I mean, it's you see everything on my Facebook and on my on my website that That's you know all the, the positive and the yeah. And the, yeah yeah all the cool stuff. But you know, it's just like with everything else. There's there's good and there's bad and there's hard and there's crazy and it's uh, a lot of red tape. So when you're dealing with. So what's stars. what's like the worst experience you ever had? Then, if we're talking about some of the negative things that people don't see, uh, I've been I've been beaten several times really? at concerts. Whether it's by yeah, most of the time, not so much anymore because you know very quickly you learn how to how to deal with that kind of thing. I don't and, know who, uh, the, who the heck would want to beat up a photographer, but okay. <laughs> oh, like well, basically, what would happen is if I'm shooting like stadium shows or something and there's uh, I think one one in particular was RFK Stadium I shot and there was 65,000 people and people had been there for probably 10 hours and it was really hot sweaty people are mad blah 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 and what's happening they start crowd surfing uh-huh. and they start coming over the top of the barricade kicking and fighting and stuff and you know you get not that they do it intentionally uh-huh. But they may hit you or kick you and, you know, stuff like that. And I was actually, uh, I had an incident in Norfolk, Virginia, several years ago. And it was with uh, Rob Zombie. Oh, wow. He, I was shooting a show, and uh, he came up. I was to the right of the stage, which is the stage left. And I was, I had just shot him, and he ran to the stage right. And I was standing there shooting his guitar player and his wife, which is, is very, very, you know, she's very beautiful, oh, very yeah. hot. Oh, yeah, I yeah, saw her in the Halloween movie. movie. <laughs> yeah, there you go. She's a, she's a dancer on stage. And so I'm shooting, and he comes up behind me and kicks me, like, at the base of my skull from behind. Oh, wow. And kicks me, like, three times and knocks me down to the floor. And, uh, you know, that was a little, you know, you can't really do anything about it. I mean, there's 2,000 disciples there, and you know, he has several guard, bodyguards and stuff like that. So you just have to kind of, you know, just roll with it. It's Like I said before, it's just part of it. It's, it's not to be, it's, it's not meant to be easy all the time. It's difficult sometimes, and uh, it's well, just rock and roll. Yeah. There was another time that it's... Uh, that I'll never forget. This was probably worse, actually, and I wasn't physically attacked. <laughs> um, I was shooting David Lee Roth somewhere, and uh, if, as those of you who don't know who he is, he was the lead singer of Van Halen. Oh, yeah. and he is now. He uh, At the time, he was by himself. And so, I'm shooting, and he comes up to me, and he starts, you know, when I shoot most of these people, I'm standing there at the stage at their feet. Uh-huh. between security guards and the, the fans. And uh, he just looks at me and he starts laughing and joking. And he's got a bottle of Jack Daniels in his hand and after uh, you know a, a minute or so, he turns the bottle of Jack Daniels upside down and pours it all over my camera and ruins my camera. And so it was, that was a bit of a bad... Yeah, I evening. think I remember you telling me that way back <laughs> in 2006 when we chatted, yeah. Yeah, the, the, zombie incident, the zombie incident happened after I did the interview with you, but I think, yeah, the the Jack Daniels was probably a couple of years before I uh-huh. met wow. you. So, like, uh, so like, how do how do you react when stuff like that happens? I mean, can't you like sue him or anything, or 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 well, do something about it? There's to be honest with you, Frankie. There's really not a lot that. You know, I guess my first reaction, I was kind of stunned at first. First of all, this guy's like four foot tall, so he, you know, he, I, I, I could, I could definitely have, have retaliated if I had wanted to, uh-huh. but, you know, I just left, and, and I certainly had every right in the world. I don't think anybody has, you know, the, the right to be beaten or kicked or any no. kind of assault like that. Well, uh, maybe there are some people, but bad people, but, <laughs> yeah. you know. But not good people. people. Don't anyway. yeah. yeah, and uh, so I thought about it, but I, you know, I didn't want to get blacklisted or anything like that. So I just kind of sucked it up. And the funny thing about it is, I was driving home 
and it was uh, it was in Virginia Beach, and I was driving home about five hours, uh-huh. and I called a lot of my friends and and told them about it, and every single person said the same thing. Everybody was like, "Man, that's fucking cool!" And I'm like, "Did you hear what I said? I just got beaten." And everybody just thought it was cool because he did it. Yeah. So, you know, that kind of took a lot of the edge off of it. It just kind of became a joke. And, huh. uh, you know, but sometimes I look back on it and I kind of wish that I had a f- filed charges or something. Yeah. You know, so that it doesn't happen to somebody else. And but I suppose... Because that guy kind of blew can it. Oh, yeah. And I suppose you, you probably thought that it was going to hurt your reputation as a photographer people know that oh he's just going to sue somebody because he can't handle the pressure of of photography in the business or something like that blah 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 I should have you know when I look back on it maybe maybe I should have pressed charges I don't know I don't know if it was the right thing to do or not but that's what I did you know I just left and sucked it up and well the least that he could have the least he could have done for you is at least apologize Uh, you know David Lee Roth and, and Rob Zombie I mean, even if they didn't know you, you could just say, hey, you know, I mean, what's, you know, give me a million dollars now. You just broke my camera, you fucker. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. The, uh, the thing about it is you're not, you're not typically going to get a, an apology out of a, so, you know, somebody in that. So has but photo- I did get an apology yeah. from this management. Has photography always been something you wanted to do, or, or did you ever decide to do something else? Like, since you, since you are the, the known as the rock and roll photographer... Did you ever want to do anything in rock and roll, like like play music or anything? Um, I started out actually. My my parents bought me a guitar when I was about fourteen, and I uh, sanded it down and I painted it like Eddie Van Halen's guitar. Mm-hmm. And after, after a couple of weeks of trying to play it, I couldn't play it like Eddie, and I got frustrated and, and just quit. Uh-huh. And so, you know, I thought, well, I'm not going to be a rock star. I'm going to be the next best thing. I'll be a rock star photographer. So well, there you that's go. Where I, <laughs> that's where I went. <laughs> no, no, that's pretty cool, though. I mean, yeah, and, and and no, I'm just really happy that you've been able to be successful, and you know, even throughout all this time, and and you know, you, it's probably something you'll be able to retire on, you know, more or less, being your own employer. You know. Well, I've got a lot of definitely got a lot of stories, and I'm working on a book right now. And uh, not on not on stories, but on you know on photography. Sure. Uh, so I'm 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 trying to branch out and do as much as I can with it. I'm for the first time ever I'm selling my uh, rock and roll prints as well as political. I've worked with a lot of world leaders, um, oh. so I'm selling my prints as limited edition prints for the first time ever at uh, StriderImage.com, and so I'm doing a lot of stuff. I'm going to start teaching. Uh, photography classes, seminars basically in uh, Southern California between San Diego and Los Angeles. Wow. So, yeah, there's a lot of things, you know, kind of in the in the mix and getting ready to happen. And huh. I never know. I never pictured you being a teacher. <laughs> that's kind of well, that's kind of different. Kinda, <laughs> there's, there's a, yeah, there's a lot of things that I've learned in my career that people don't have to People don't have to experience. Uh-huh. You know, they can uh, they can learn from the mistakes that I've made and and do you know something for themselves. I mean, there's there's success out there for everybody. You know, there's uh, something that everybody can do if they want to be a photographer. Then you know, there's definitely a lot of room for photographers. I mean, hell, these days everybody's a photographer. Oh yeah, you know? uh, that's going to lead me into my next question here. But my question is. Uh, you know, with the change of technology and everything since uh, back in the days of the Polaroid camera, how 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 much do you think the uh, the the digital cameras have have uh, enhanced everybody compared to uh, the way that uh, photography used to be with the Polaroid, or even back in the day with the old old black and white cameras or whatever? I would say it's a million times better. <laughs> it's um, it's definitely. I just got a Nikon D six hundred, which is one of the best that Nikon has at the moment. It's twenty four megapixels, and it's my absolute favorite camera that I've ever had. Oh. And but to be honest with you, I mean, I still like. It seems like we kind of go back to the Polaroid 
and uh, you know those kinds of old films and stuff like that. I mean, I've got an iPhone, uh-huh. just like most people do. And one of the classes I'm teaching is going to be with iPhone photography. Uh-huh. And there's so much that you can do with these things. But uh, if you if you look at it, the a lot of the applications that come with it that you can get, you know, the, uh, the apps that you can download are apps that have filters that change photos to look like Polaroid pictures. Yeah, like so the uh, like the Instagram. What do you think about school, that? Yeah. yeah, Instagram is great. You can, uh, uh, you know, Frankie. There's people. They have stuff now that. Um, that I'm going to be teaching people that you can you can do with literally just a, a push of a button that takes professional photographers hours to do on Photoshop uh-huh. and it's just incredible. You you don't need to spend thousands of dollars on a camera and, and lenses and stuff like that. I mean you can you have the world at your fingertips with your iPhone. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Or with your for that matter with your you know your droid or whatever the case is uh-huh. so there's a huge advantage that people have now that that were absolutely not even thought of when I was you know even not even growing up but even just first getting involved in the in the industry you would you would never have even thought of something like that first of all you couldn't have even imagine having a phone that you could carry in your hand <laughs> yeah <laughs> so like small and everything exactly yeah. yeah yeah jeez so not to mention have the internet and stuff like that so man people people that are starting today have got the most advantages <laughs> that you could possibly have and, and one of the and advantages it, yeah one of the advantages would be social media I'm pretty sure you use social media a lot to get some of your gigs I'm sure Yes, I do. I use, you know, I use Facebook, I use Twitter, uh, I use everything that I can get my hands on, basically. I've got, I have two Facebooks. I have uh, Facebook.com slash Strider Image, uh-huh. and uh, I have Facebook.com slash Michael Strider. So, it's, uh, I have two of them that I'm running, and it's kind of a full-time job. <laughs> No. Well, I always see you on there most of the time, you know, when you're not too busy. Or maybe you are really busy when you're on there. That's why it takes you a while to respond sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a, it's a lot of work. I wish I could just pay somebody to, you know, to do the social media aspect of it. Yeah. <laughs> that would be good. So you never thought ever yeah. about becoming like a, you know, like doing stuff with video cameras and all? I know that's not really photography, but I mean, it's almost like photography, except it's motion picture instead of still picture, but... You know, I mean, it's still something impressive, I'd say. Well, the camera that I got, the 600 that I got, actually has HD video on it, so oh. you can do video. I just haven't used it um, uh, very much. Uh-huh. So, but I mean, it's it's definitely great to uh, to, to have and to you know if I if I do need it. So, you know, I'm looking forward to getting to learn how to use it. Yeah, if very, you, if very soon, you know, I don't know if since you're since you said you you live in Los Angeles once in a while. Have you ever heard of a company called Maker Studios? I don't think I have. It's it's based on it's like it's like through the YouTube thing, you know. It's like through Google and everything, YouTube. But it's like out in Los Angeles. It's where all these popular YouTubers that actually get paid the big bucks or whatever. And anybody, they, I guess they get over three hundred employees. It's like if you're if you're an up and comer, like like you're pretty much independent by yourself. Even though you you know you right. you you have jobs that you do and stuff, but I'm thinking that if there's ever something that you you know if you want to find the next big gig or whatever, maybe try out Maker Studios. I don't know what where they're located in Los Angeles, but I know they have a website anyway, and I think they have their address, I believe. Anyway, uh, it's a it's just a company that helps people get from where they're at now to where they want to be. You know, it's pretty much their right. your. your End all, be all, pretty much, or be all, end all. <laughs> if you really well, want, I'm actually working. There's a company in L- in uh, San Diego that I'm working with called Ludus. It's L U D U S. Okay. And I believe the website is theludus.com. It's T H E ludus.com. Uh-huh. And uh, they are the same kind. Of, they train people uh, that want to. Let's just say if it's you know makeup artists, they they they. Uh, you know they do uh, hair, you know hairstyling. They do all kinds of stuff on that side of the industry. 
So they help people to get their businesses also. Another thing to do is they help people get uh, their businesses up and running and get you from where you are to where you want to be. Uh-huh. And, you know, they have, you know, basically a training and uh, it's, uh, it's owned by Brian and, and Beth Whitfield and they are just amazing at what they do. Beth is one of the, the best hairstylists in Hollywood and in, in California <laughs> or in, you know, the country, if you ask me. Uh-huh. And Brian handles the business aspect of it he is just you know out of this world amazing also he's he's uh he's helped me with my business in ways that i cannot even explain so oh, wow. these guys are amazing definitely keep checking out my website for uh you know up, uh, very soon i'll have some dates on there for when we're gonna start teaching classes because when I'm when I'm doing the classes that I was telling you about I'm going to be doing it basically in partnership with these guys oh wow and but you can check out Strider it's uh, striderimage.com it's not Strider Images with an S it's yeah. striderimage.com yeah I, I've been to your website I, I've checked it out a, a few times and uh, yeah it's definitely uh, definitely a, a nice detailed website with uh, <clears throat> contact if, or like you know you have a contact tab and everything and then you have like your, your pictures and some of the stuff that you've done and then a little bio about yourself on the front of the page. So that's that's pretty cool. Well, it's a simple site, you know. It's nothing too nothing too technical, anyway. You know. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you like it. I just actually uh, we just redesigned it. Brian and I uh, just totally redesigned everything, and you know now I'm selling my uh, my limited edition prints, and and uh, that's the best way to keep in touch with me is you know through there, and you know also. There's a ton of stuff on my Facebook that I do not have on my website, so uh-huh. you can check out my, you know, my my uh, my Facebook and my fan page, and I mean, there's just it's just endless. Oh sure, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you're obviously obviously a busy guy and stuff, and and uh, have you ever shot for like any movies? Because I was the the one thing I've always been kind of curious about. You know, I'm, okay, I'll I'll tell you this. I'm the type of guy when it comes to movies, I don't just. Uh, I don't just stop the movie when the movie's over. I like to watch the beginning and ending credits, you know? Like, you right. know, there's a lot of people that leave when the movie, the end credits start to roll. Well, I'm not the type of pure person to do that. I'll listen to the music. I'll listen to, I'll, I'll read who was in it, who who the makeup artists were, and all that stuff, because that's what I, I, I'm interested in. I like stuff like right. that, you know, uh, when it right. comes to entertainment. Anyway, I are you the type of person who would do, like, uh, like I think called I think principal photography or something like that. I don't know if I'm even saying that right, but there's in some end credits there's always somebody who's like a principal photographer or something like that. What the hell is that? Actually, mean? <laughs> yeah, actually no. Um, I haven't I haven't done anything on movie sets because you basically have to be you know you have to be in a union in order to do that. Okay. So I haven't actually taken the steps to actually get into the union. Yeah. So. And that's not something that I'm uh, that I would that I'm opposed to. I mean, I would love to do it, but it's a very, very expensive and very you know you you really need to be in a in an area that's got lots of movie projects going on. And right now, you know, North Carolina, contrary to what people think, North Carolina does not. Yeah. Uh, and and to be honest with you, another little surprise is that Los Angeles does not have an incredible amount going really? on right now. He, that's hard to believe. Yes, <laughs> my um, my roommate is actually a special effects artist, um, and he works on tons and tons of movies. Oh wow! And he uh, he won. He was on the the TV show, the sci fi TV show, um, Face Off, and he was the the very first winner of Face Off. Oh so wow! He, yeah, he is. <laughs> um, he's definitely very, very, very much into that side of the industry. He works on lots of movies. He just uh, just did a movie called, I think, A, a Winter's Tale or something like that. Okay. It's uh, Russell, Russell Crowe and Will Smith and and Colin Farrell. Well, that's kind and, of, a, uh, that's kind of a, a eclectic mix of actors. <laughs> oh, I know, right? <laughs> and there's in particular that he did, and you'll see it if you get to see the movie when it comes out, and I'm sure it'll be months from now, but yeah. he did a, an ice sculpture of Russell Crowe huh. so you it's one of the big things in the movie but he you know he he travels he doesn't work 
locally because there just isn't anything to do here and especially uh-huh. for you know for a photographer and he you know he does uh special effects and stuff on movie sets uh-huh. so you know wow. there's a lot more opportunity for him but it, again he <clears throat> he flies out everywhere he goes he he goes around the around the country Jeez, that's pretty cool that's pretty cool but do you but, yeah. uh, back back to my question though I was I I, I kind of asked you kind of quickly I guess uh well, do you know what principal photography is or or when you see like in the in the beginning credits somebody says they're director of photography what does that mean like when it comes the to the director film? of photography basically is going to be the person that that filmed the movie that was actually working with the cameras and stuff oh okay so they, you know they call them the DP basically um so that's you know that's more along the lines of what that stuff is so it's going to be video instead of stills oh okay so yeah, it should be like a credit that says still photographer or something yeah, like that maybe make it a little easier you know. or whatever <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, to me it would be anyway. But I guess to people that are trained in that, you know, in that kind of stuff, it's it's probably as easy to them as what I do is to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, because like like in the film industry, you know, when you watch, that's one thing that that interests me about the ending credits more than just the beginning credits. Because the beginning credits just show you who's in the who's in the movie, who wrote the script, who directed it, you know, blah blah blah, who did the music. But in the ending credits, if it's a big movie and there's a lot of people that worked on it. Holy shit! <laughs> it was, there's so many yeah, different jobs. Like yeah. Hundreds. Yeah. A lot of times there's several hundred people that work on a movie. Yeah. So it's that's why it takes. That's why they're so expensive to make. And uh, <laughs> he, uh, one of the things that uh, Connor worked on, his name is Connor McCullough, that he worked on was uh, uh, there was one in Charlotte I mean not in Charlotte it was in North Carolina it was filmed it was called The Hunger Games yeah yeah I've heard of that one (laughs) that one was relatively the budget was relatively good on you know small on that one it was less than 100 million I think it was like 70 million (laughs) that's small that's a small budget 70 million (laughs) yeah it is wow you know for this day and age you know oh geez a lot of these movies are hundreds several hundred million dollars to make them so huh Wow, you know, that's why it costs so much to no, tell people are getting on no, the money. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Well, I tell you what, I, I appreciate you taking the time to let me uh, do this uh, second interview with you, even though it's our first time in, in over six and a half years. And it's just great to know that you're still around and that we're able to connect uh, via s- the right. Facebook this time rather than MySpace. <laughs> well, cool, man. I enjoyed it. Yeah, and uh, so anytime you want, yeah, you know, we can hook up and do a third one one of these days. And yeah. Maybe kind of maybe if, after the book comes out. Yeah, or or maybe you know if you if we are able to meet in Grand Forks or Fargo, if you guys happen to spend the night at a hotel or something like that, you know, let me know, and then uh, maybe we can do a video thing. Maybe we can f- meet in person and do something. You know, that'd be cool. kind of fun. That'd be great. That'd I'll be let excellent. you know when we <laughs> reschedule the tour and we can uh, you know do something big at that time. Then that'd all be right. cool. Well, thank you very much, and uh, you have a good rest of the day. We'll see you later. Hey, you too, Frankie. Thanks right. a lot, man. Bye bye. That was rock and roll photographer Michael Strider, my first interview of 2013, but the 21st interview thus far of uh, the interviews that I've been back, came to me and asked. asked. You know, Frankie, you haven't done 20, 20 interviews or 21 interviews thus far. You've only done, what, 19 or whatever? Well, if you go back to the R&R uh, rock and wrestling video that I made, uh, or that uh, or R&R wrestling when Buck, Rock and Roll Zoom Off was there, uh, I interviewed three of his uh, independent wrestlers that he had uh, booked to w- w- that were on tour with him, and uh, did short little interviews with each and each of one of those guys. So, and I count every interview that I do. I don't care if it's a forty-minute interview or if it's a freaking two-minute interview. If I talk to you and it's something that's on a professional level, uh, and, and it does have to do with something that's entertaining, like pro wrestling is entertaining, uh, yeah, that kind of counts. I would say. So I've done. This is number twenty-one so far this year. Uh, we got number twenty-two will be coming up shortly, and that will be with the original Doink the Clown. Yes, believe it or not, twenty over twenty years ago, or about twenty years ago now that we're in two thousand thirteen, and the year in the days of the old WWF days, uh, nineteen ninety-three, especially was a big year for the World Wrestling Federation. A lot of more colorful character 
wrestlers uh, developed more. And Dark the Cloud was one of the guys who, uh, I guess, more or less early 92, but more or less 1993 was when he became the Dark the Cloud character. But the guy, real name is Matt Wade Osborne, and uh, you get to hear his story. Um, other than things that just Dark the Cloud related, uh, this guy's been wrestling for a long time, even back to the days of the WCCW days, the World Class Championship Wrestling Days in Texas, and we're going to hear his story and uh, why he still likes to wrestle to this day. Uh, uh, when I interview him uh, in the next interview that I do, that'll be up a little bit later on this week. So, thanks to again, again, Michael Strider, and check out his website, striderimage.com or facebook.com slash Strider, or Michael Strider. <laughs> 